All right. Welcome to another session of Authentic Selling Live. I got my man, Mike Wander, here today uh, from Saster. Mike, thanks for joining us. How are you? I'm good, Colin. It's great to be here. Thanks for having us. It's great to see you guys. What the heck us. are we going to talk about today? Cold emails, baby. That's that's the that's the name of the game. That's, that's your jam, huh? I mean, I've, I've been I've been seeing you popping up here and there. Um, you know, you're you're quite the uh, email aficionado. Uh, some people would say so. Um, I like to say I'm pretty mediocre at it. I am pretty mediocre <laughs> at a lot of things, but <laughs> cold email happens to be one of those. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, originally I had, I had, I was looking for somebody for the session, and like multiple people recommended you got to get Mike on. So thank you, Mike, for joining us. Uh, give people just a little bit of background: who you are, what you do, where you work, what you guys do there, all that good stuff. Before we sort of jump in. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I'm Mike Wonder. I have been in the sales world for almost a year now, um, so not too long. <laughs> but uh, my background is I spent quite some time in the military, uh, deployed kind of all over the world. Um, three tours, I was in Africa, I was in the Middle East, and I was all over Asia. Uh, even spent some, spent some time floating on uh, one of our world-class aircraft carriers. So that was that was a good time. Uh, and then ultimately, it led me into sales. And that's uh, where I got my first sales gig here at Saster. And we're the world's largest community for B2B SaaS CEOs and founders. Simply put, uh, our content company that puts up content for teams anywhere from three to 300 million ARR uh, and, above and beyond. We just help you scale faster with more effectiveness. Yeah. And uh, I had the, I had the privilege of going to Saster with the, with the Humantic team uh, last year. Um, I think we'll definitely be going back. It was, it was a ton of fun. Um, I think a lot of people were really excited to get, you know, kind of, you know, fully back to, to real life in-person events. Yeah. Um, something that wasn't virtual. <laughs> right. And nothing wrong with virtual, right? Virtual has its place. It has its time, but it's always great to get back in person. And I actually, there's a lot of hesitancy around getting back in person. Um, we've been on zoom for so long and everybody's just been, you know, in this like webinar world and yeah. everyone was caught, like was nervous. People were reaching out to me like, Hey, how do I get back into being in person? Like talking to people, you know, again, mm. like, do I shake people's hands? And uh, I was just laughing. I was like, look, the way you feel right now, it's the same way everyone feels, yeah. right? Like everyone's in the same boat. So you just got to get out yeah. there and do it. Just be yourself yeah. and it'll all come together. Yeah. I think when you meet people for the first time in real life, it's kind of that weird, like, Hey, is it a handshake? Is it a hug? Are you okay with touching? Like, you know, what's right. your comfort level? <laughs> I gave doing a lot a, of doing a, <laughs> a foot pound, <laughs> you know, who knows all <laughs> kinds of things that, you know, came out of, uh, you know, COVID, I guess. But anyway, just to set a quick agenda, uh, what we're going to do today is obviously we're going to talk about email. We're going to talk about authentic selling. Um, we brought Mike on today from Saster because he was recommended by by many folks as uh, uh, to talk about this subject. And I've seen some content that Mike's done in the past with like our friends over at Lavender. Um, and he definitely knows his stuff when it comes to email. So we're going to talk about some email basics. We're going to talk about a little bit about personality types and disk profiles. Um, and then what we're going to do um, is we're going to actually write some emails from scratch for specific people that I think, you know, some of the audience might be familiar with. And we're going to kind of role play a little bit. We're going to assume that they're a particular ICP that uh, we might be selling into. Um, but more than anything, what we're going to do is we're going to take their personality type into consideration when we write these emails. Um, and then we're also going to maybe even do something called, I think we're calling it what? man versus robot. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. You're going to have to stick around to figure out what that is. <laughs> What's better. So Mike yeah. or AI. <laughs> so uh, before we jump in here, Mike, just give us like, give us some really like of your basic fundamentals around writing an email that sings. Right. I think when you and I first talked you about, you talked about writing an email that like strikes some emotion, right. Which really resonated with me. So what are some basics or frameworks that you like to follow, uh, keeping in with the theme here, writing an email that sings? Yeah, I think there's, there's really three key components to an outbound sales email. And the first one is you have to strike an emotion, 
right? And that's that's the writing an email that sings. Like when I read that email, if I walk away feeling nothing, then I'm not replying to it and I'm probably just going to delete it, right? Or it's going to spam. So if you can make them feel something, then you're already starting off on a better foot. And the second piece of that is showing them that you know them. Shout out to Sam McKenna, um, right? But that, that show me you know me thing is personalization and relevance. That's the second key metric. You have to have both of them preferably. Um, and we'll talk about some ways to get around uh, making sure you put both of those in while keeping the relevancy and you know maintaining the point of why you reached out. And then the third one is your CTA. Your CTA is so valuable because mm -hmm. most people, they just think, okay, I have to ask a question here. I should be asking for a hard time. I should be pushing for a meeting. When in reality, when you ask for thoughts or you ask for interest or you ask, you know, an intriguing question, you leave them with curiosity, you're more likely to get a conversation. And that's the approach that you should take when it comes to cold email. Uh, I think that's where a lot of people tend to make a lot of mistakes, right? Is asking for time or even worse, oh, dropping the calendar link, dropping the calendar oh. link in the email <laughs> as the call to action. Um, and, and, and so give me an example of like one or two better call to actions. Yeah. I like to use one like thoughts on Humantic exploring Saster. Right. Like that's an easy one. Like thoughts. Give me some of your thoughts. Um, I always like to tie my call to action with the line above it. So yeah. um, like when we write out the emails, I can kind of show you that. But I just like it to flow. I don't like it where the way that I frame my emails, right, is I write the first line, like the hey line, right, or some words and then your name. I write the second line, which is usually a piece of like personal or relevancy. And then I write the third line, which is like tying it in. This is the reason why I'm reaching out, right? Like this is why I'm reaching out to you as a company. Um, and then the fourth line is like some sort of intriguing emotion-based line. And that's my CTA that follows that. So my CTA is really just a pen, but I like to ask for thoughts or I like to say like curious, are events on your radar for 2023? I'm curious, right? Like just genuinely asking. And then usually it, spark some sort of a conversation or, you know, they'll reply and say they are perfect timing, right? Okay. Perfect timing. Hey, you mentioned it was great timing. It's great timing on our part too. Do any of these times work for you to chat, right? Let's do it. You just ask right off the bat, right? <laughs> on the second one. And typically they're, yeah. they're ready. To. Yeah. I think that, um, a lot of it comes down to the mindset people are bringing into email and just real quick, if anybody has anybody that's joining us today, thank you. Um, feel free to drop any questions in the chat. Uh, we don't want to make you wait till the end for Q&A. We will have some time at the end for some Q&A, depending on um, how long it takes us to write some of these emails. Uh, hopefully not too long, but uh, we're going to yep. try to save some time at the end for, for Q&A. Uh, but also, if you have any questions for Mike specifically uh, or things that we're talking about at the moment, just drop them in the chat. We're going to bring those up on screen um, in order uh, when we can, and we'll make sure we get those answered uh, while you're here with us. So I, I think that the point there is, is you know, the mindset of when writing a good email is that um, people are thinking, I got to book a meeting. Yeah. And that's the wrong way to think about it. It's like, yeah. no, I'm trying to create some, some intrigue. I'm trying to get somebody to maybe lean into a conversation. Uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, it, it goes back to this. Um, and a shout out in the comments. We got some people coming in. We got Alex, we got Jack, Logan. What's up, guys? Um, also, always interested to see where you guys are, you know, coming in from. So feel free to drop your locations for where you're at. Um, but to get back to, to your point, Colin, I think it goes into outbound cold email, right? Like cold email is oftentimes the best marketing, right? You often yeah. will see outbound emails turn into inbound sales. Um, shout out to all the outbound teams, all the SDRs, BDRs, everyone that feels that, right? It's a hard one to, to, to grasp. But the reason why I say that is because if you approach it with that framework, what are marketers doing? They're educating, they're informing, right? Awareness. They're, getting, yeah. they're aware. They're, yeah, they're growing awareness. That's what you're doing. That's what your goal should be as a seller, as, as an SDR, as somebody who's good giving cold email, doing cold outreach, 
your goal should be reaching out to this person to create awareness about a problem that you have identified that you have a possible solution for, and then to garner further conversation from that. Your goal is not, hey, this is who I am. This is this is why I think you're a great fit. Let's meet right now, right? Like no one, no one's yeah. going to want to do that. That's why your reply rates are less than 1%. Ah, oh, that stinks. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So uh, thank you, Ryan, for joining us. Alex, Logan from Oklahoma, Heather from Atlanta. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here. Uh, you know, for those that are just joining us, we've got Mike from Saster. We're talking about some basics in email. We're going to get into talking a little bit about personality types and why that matters with messaging. Um, and then we're going to write some emails from scratch. So, um, all right. So, we, we talked a little bit about some basics and some frameworks to follow, right? Uh, we also talked about some things to avoid. We talked about, you know, some of the common mistakes around call to action. Um, but what are some common mistakes with like opening line or even subject line? Hey, Andrea. Hey, Lindsay. <laughs> ben, everybody's coming in. Yeah, common mistakes with subject line. Way too long, right? There's a, there's a time and a place, right? If I'm emailing Sam McKenna, I've interacted with her content enough. I've interacted with her enough, right? If she sees Mike Wonder in her inbox, it's probably not going to spam and it's probably not going to the trash can, right? Yeah. So like I can do some long show me, you know me, fun, thought provoked subject line. But if I'm emailing yourself, Colin, and we've never talked before, I'm yeah. not putting seven, eight, nine words in a code email. I'm making everything as optimal as I can for my for your phone, because let's be real your phone, right? It's probably right next to you. And while it's off right now, because you know, we're on this, but if I emailed you, are you going to likely see it on your, on your computer first, or are you going to see it pop up on your actual phone first that you have a Gmail notification? Phone? Because I typically don't check my email on my computer that often. Um, but in between meetings, breaks, going to get a coffee, water, I'm just like, Hey, quickly, scanning, seeing if there's anything good, anything important, not important, delete. Yes. Save it. Interesting. So, and I think a lot right. of people are operating that way. Yeah. So subject lines, keep them to two, three or four words, max, right? Short, sweet. What's your simple. thoughts on one, one word subject lines? So personally, I don't use them very much. <laughs> I okay. mean, if they work, they work. Right. Um, I mean, there's a probably, there's a time and a place for everything, right? Like for Sam McKenna, yeah. I'm going to keep using her, right? I think we're going to talk about her <laughs> later on or write an email to her. A subject line for her would be, you know, show me, you know me, but the acronym, if she sees you, if she sees an email and it says, you know, S-M-Y-K-M, yeah. right? That's, that's going to be a perfect one liner for her because it's going to grab her attention right away. And that's the importance of the first line of your email. That's where your subject line hits. Now the first line needs to get them going. The if you put the hey, like I'll use Alex, for example, he's in the comments. If you use, hey, Alex, comma, enter, enter, they're going to see that second line. But instead, you could say, you know, if it's Alex, I could put SSIRL as a subject line. And I could put, love the episode that you had with Mike, Alex, period. Second line. Yeah. Seems like you're doing some really interesting stuff, stuff at educating sellers. And then you go through from there. So it's like, I'm showing him personalization, right? The subject line was short and sweet. I showed him personalization in the first line. And then I showed him relevancy by the fact that he's educating sellers and I can go into what I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Uh, so Jack's got a Thoughts comment. On, uh, oh, yeah, we got yeah. some questions in here. Yeah. Thoughts, Thoughts on, on ABC. I guess, line. you know, a reply, you know, having the reply thread in the subject line. If, Andrea, great question. If it's from LinkedIn, if you've had a conversation on LinkedIn, I use that. RE, comma, convo on LinkedIn, like convo on LI or whatever. Like, but I'm, I don't ever really use it um, if it's like I'm cold emailing someone for the first time and I'm just like replying to something that they've said in the past or anything like that. Uh, the RE does grab attention. You're very right. But if it's the first time you email them and your domains aren't warmed, the RE yeah. with the semicolon will probably end you up in spam. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you're also, I mean, if you're putting that into like the first touch email and, and it's not from like a, you know, moving a conversation off LinkedIn to email or there wasn't a previous email sent. I mean, what is that? What is that telling? You're 
per your recipient, right? That you're just basically right. full of it. <laughs> yep. So yeah, you never want to um, come definitely reply, threading, right? threading it with the reply is great. And I love the concept of, Hey, we had a conversation on LinkedIn, you know, re, you know, re, and, and then basically sort of recapturing what that is in the subject line with like, Hey, basically we're moving the thread over here to continue the conversation because LinkedIn DMS are a black hole. And if you get some, you know, good interest or conversation going on social, move that thing to email as quickly as possible. Yeah. Yeah. It's, but it's when you have an inherent risk, right? When you're doing outbound sales, there's an inherent risk for moving to a different medium of communication. So if I am emailing with somebody and I shoot them a text and I say, Hey, it's Mike from Saster, right? Wanted to shoot you a text in case this is easier. All right, that's fine. I'm opening up a much easier method of communication. But if somebody's on LinkedIn and you say, we're going to move this to email, there's a big risk there because it's probably the first time you've emailed them or even anyone in their domain. And so you still have to craft a good enough thing where you don't end up in spam so that they at least see it and then they can reply to it. So like there's, there's a risk that comes with everything. It's like most people, the mistake that they'll make is they have a conversation with yourself, right? And yep. you're like, hey, this sounds great. Send me an email. Here's my email. But then they'll just go through and they'll just like send you this long list or they'll just ask for time or they'll just pitch. It's like, no, you started a conversation. Continue the conversation and then let your prospect open the door for when it would be a good time to me. Yeah. And, and I think if you're going to move it to a different channel, like have a reason, right? Or maybe you ask them, maybe, you know, you had a good conversation going and it went dark, like have a reason to move it to another channel. Right. Yeah. All right. So any other, thank you everybody who's joining us, hitting the comments in here. Uh, appreciate it. Any other questions for me or for Mike, just drop them and, and we'll get to them um, as we pop them up there. Um, we've got a question coming in from Ben. Um, if we want to bring that up on the screen, Ben, uh, any way to know if your domain is, is in spam, for example, previous sellers might have sent poor emails and blocked the domain. Yeah. So there's two ways. Um, there's some domain websites. I won't get into them. There's a lot of them where you can go and you can check the health of your domain. Um, we can put some some materials in there, some resources. Uh, one of the good ones, like go reach out to Mailshake. Uh, they'll give you some, you know, some consulting. Shout out to them, and they'll walk you through it and they'll show you how healthy your domain is. Uh, and then the second way, the much easier way, is when somebody checks their spam, if they if they reply to you, if they see your email. Sometimes we've gotten replies. I know Jack just got one this week where somebody replied back to him after like two and a half months, and they were like, "Hey, sorry, just seeing this, you were in spam." <laughs> right. Uh, so there's different, there's two different ways, but the much easier route is go check a domain warmer, go check and see what the health of your domain is. Ben, one of the best tips that I can give you is if you're not sure, say you have a very, very like a premium prospect you want to reach out to, say it's me and I'm at Saster, but say, you know, Jack, you don't know me. You want to reach out to me, but you know, Jack, one, you could ask for the intro to me through Jack, but two, if you want to send me the cold email, you can email Jack. And as soon as he replies back to you, you've warmed the do domain, your two domains together. Now, when you email me, you likely won't go into spam. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And uh, Alex says paging Jesse Olet. Yeah. So Jesse knows a lot about this. Another thing too, is you can, you can go to like MX toolbox, I think it is. And, yeah. and even MX just make sure that make sure your technical setup like your SPF and, and DKIM and all those things are set up because that, that impacts it a lot as well. So warming your domain or people hitting spam a lot is your technical setup. Like that's a, that's a whole nother session. Um, but it's definitely an important point for, for people to think about because even if you write the best email and you're landing in spam, sorry, doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, all right. So we're going to shift gears a little bit and, and we're going to talk a little bit about different personality types before we get into writing some emails. We're going to pull up those people's profiles as well. Um, so if we're just following sort of basic disc, um, you know, let's start with D, right? D is a dominant person. This is a person that doesn't enjoy small talk and pleasantries and relationships and rapport building are not that they're not important. They're just less important, specifically in like business context. They're very 
goal oriented people. And the most important thing for them is they really want to see that what it is that you do uh, aligns with their goals. So yep. just kind of thinking about that type of person, any specific things that you might do differently in an email? Yeah, I'm going to be short. I'm going to be sweet and to the point. And I am not going to ask if like, I'm not going to go crazy with this personalization and all these other things that they don't need. I'm going to tell them what yeah. the problem is that I see or that I think might come up in the future. I'm going to tell them why I think we can help. And then I'm just going to straight up ask them if they're interested. Right. Yeah. yeah Avoid so small we'll talk. Okay. Spot. I didn't even know we had this. Yeah. I'm saying you're, you're getting me here. <laughs> yeah. So, so these are things to consider when you might be, uh, writing an email. And this is not just email. This applies like all communication, right? So um, these are just some simple sort of guardrails to think a little bit differently when when maybe communicating with somebody who's a you know, D-type. All right. Yeah, can so, we pull up Alex's question here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's pull up Alex's question. So Alex, uh, let's see if we can show Alex's question. Perfect. There we go. Is there a way to ask someone, do you prefer rapport building or getting straight to the point? <laughs> Ooh, that's, yeah. that's, that's actually a really good question. It's a, <laughs> it is a good one. I don't know if I would ask, but what I would do, Alex, is I would go use a tool like Humantic or I would use a tool like Lavender and who, by the way, Lavender works, you know, in the back end with Humantic for these personalization things. So, um, what you can do is you can open up the personalization tab or you can open up Humantic and it will tell you what type of personality they have, right? So um, you can leverage that rather than asking the question and potentially uh, not getting the reply. Yeah, and, and, and what we've seen, you know, teams do really well is they might have sort of their baseline sequence, right, that they use um, and then rewriting those based on personality. So a lot of the heavy lifting is already done for you once you identify what the personality type of that person is. Yeah, and I think uh, one of the other things that would help the audience here, anybody could be anybody could be a D, but some of the, most per, the biggest personalities you'll see are like C, CISOs, right? People yeah, that are in the sales leaders, high Ds. Yeah, yeah. People that are in the technical field, people that are gonna be um, more like I feel like I don't have any time in the day. I need to just get things done. Those are the kind of people you can feel like you could, it might be safe to assume uh, to err on that side of shortness. Yeah. And, and something that's really helpful for people that are maybe thinking like, how do I start to learn more about this or identify these sort of things? Um, I, I like to tell folks like the best place to start is like no, knowing yourself first, right? So uh, identifying what your disc profile is, uh, is super helpful for you just knowing what your natural tendencies are going to be with your communication styles and preferences. And when you write emails, um, and then also be able to identify people that are similar to yourself as well, which are people that you're always going to be, you know, more compatible with. Um, all right. So let's look at the I type. So, you know, these are more relationship type people. So avoid being transactional. Um, uh, they value relationships. And in this case, like small talk, pleasantries, rapport building is actually recommended. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Perfect. So, so, so how would you do things a little bit differently okay. writing an email to an I type? Okay. Um, I types, they're kind of the easiest ones because they love to build a relationship. Uh, with I types, what I like to do is I like to put in the CTA, connect because they're likely on LinkedIn, they're likely posting, they're likely on some sort of social media outlet and they love to connect. And so if you use little like language terms, little trigger words, it subconsciously, like this is the basic fundamentals of psychology, you're subconsciously grabbing some sort of interest or using some sort of thing that they're familiar with, that they like, that they're you know constantly striving to do. So my CTA might look something like, curious if you're willing to connect about X, Y. Right, X and Y. Yeah. I'm curious if you're willing to connect. That's yeah. it. Or of even if you're willing to connect. Yeah. Or even tying what it is that you do to relationships. Right. Hey, looking yeah. to build more relationships this year at Saster. Right. You know, question exactly. mark. <laughs> sounds like sounds like you're right. Like use Alex as an example. Right. Alex is an I. Right. He values relationships. 
sounds like the SSIRL podcast is doing great. I see the relationships that you're forming and the content that you continue to provide, you know, and then yeah. you go through the value that he adds to the community with influencers. You want to talk about the value they add, like the value, value, value that they are bringing to other people. And that'll hit you home. Yeah. Awesome. If anybody who's, you know, just joining us, everybody thanks that's been here so far, loving the comments, loving the questions. Uh, if you have any other questions, fire them off. We're going to get to them in order. We'll bring them up on the screen. Um, if you're just joining us, we're kind of going over different personality types. And then here in a moment, we're going to write some emails from scratch with Mike. Um, and we're going to pull up the personality types of some people that I think everyone should be pretty familiar with. Um, even though Mike kind of gave it away early a little bit, one of the people on the list. <laughs> All right. So let's look at the S type. So these are slower adopting people, a little slower pace, so avoid rushing them. Um, and don't be pushy, right? So trying to create that like false urgency, not going to go well. Um, any suggestions with, with an S type, just kind of based on these S -types, yeah, couple of bullet points here. Yeah. The S type, the best way for that one is still using the thought focus, still thinking like, Hey, I know you're planning for 2023. Is this on the drawing board? Well, they're probably not done with planning yet because they're, you know, steadiness is, is their, yeah. is their personality. Yeah. And so they're probably not done with planning. And so they're probably going to respond to you. You know what? It is on the drawing board. Uh, this is what I'm thinking of. And then yeah. you provide them some more context. And then you say kind of as a CTA with the steadiness person is like curious, would you be willing to, you know, to chat over your potential goals? Yeah. Spend a lot of time on discovery with these people. Spend a lot of time getting to know their problem, getting to know the way they think, getting to know the things that they're really wanting to do. I would say with S types, you really want to do like a consultational sale, right? You want to really get to know them, really get to tell them that you're there for them. And then ultimately, don't be super salesy. Just be a human. Almost be a consultant. Take your mic from Sasser hat off. Put on your mic, the consultant hat, and really help them out. Yeah, yeah. I know patience uh, Patience is a hard one for me and for a lot of sellers. So, you know, knowing who you're dealing with definitely helps where you can be like, okay, I get, you know, I know with this person, I'm going to have to be a little more patient. You know, so I think that's important. Um, all right. Yeah. So C type, these are very detail oriented people, um, you know, so very buttoned up. Don't be vague. Um, explain things well um, and show that you're an expert in, in what it is that you do. Yeah. So I mean, with this one, right, is, hey, this is what. OK, so C types, you have a problem when you run into. The problem is not everyone can explain the full reason why you're reaching out, right? Not everybody can say, this is what's going on in your category. These are the players who use Humantic. This is why you should also use us, right? Sometimes you have to beat around that bush. So what you really need to drive, if that's, if that's the case for you as a seller, what you really need to drive home on is this is what's happening in the category. This is what's happening in the macroeconomic environment, right? get very detail oriented, show the fact that you know what is going on and then educate them, right? Like educate them with what you know and then ask them to educate you. Curious, like, you know, does this seem like something that you're, you're, you know, that is affecting you? Does this seem like something that you and the team are getting ahead of, right? <clears throat> Things like that. Yeah, love that. All right. Any, any other questions before we, we shift gears here? Um, we still got Alex hanging with us. We still got Heather. Uh, Heather said, what about ocean? Yeah. So, um, Humantic looks at the disc and ocean. So we're just kind of going high level here with breaking down, uh, like the disc quadrants. Um, but Humantic actually gives, uh, suggestions based on 36 different variations of personality. So this is just, we're just going over, you know, sort of real basics here. All right. So, uh, I'm going to stop sharing here for a second. And Alex is over here hyping up the comments. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate yeah. you, Alex. Shout out Alex. 
Logan, Heather, glad to see you guys are still here. All right. If you guys have any so, questions, throw them in, throw them in. All right. And Mike, you've got the document that we're going to use to write these emails. Yeah. Um, I do. Yeah, I, I have that. Yep. You want to pull that up and then I'm going to pull up our first. I think uh, some people are our the stream might be messed up. Ben asked if the presentation started over for anybody else. And then, uh, yeah, pretty sure all of us, um, I think the audience, we might, we might have uh, to. Um, I see there's quite a few people still in the audience, but I don't know if maybe the stream, Anybody, can everybody hear us okay? Maybe there's a little lag. Yeah, yeah I see about 25 people here. <laughs> Mike's the Alex. Mike's the email <laughs> celebrity. Yeah. yeah. I don't disagree with that. I don't disagree with that. <laughs> All right. So it seem, seems like the stream might be going okay. Maybe there was a little glitch. So um pablo says he had to refresh refresh so if you're having trouble if you can hear us refresh perfect there you go refresh is the way to go yeah all right well, yeah we yeah. found the solution look at that shout out pablo refresh out the problem yeah solve the solution for everybody refresh can solve a lot of technical challenges yeah all right it's probably like all right let's be real all right so uh, I'm gonna share All right, let's get to again. these emails. I think that's what everybody wants to see. Yep, yep, yep. Let's do it. All right. So I think. All right. So first do... person, first person we're bringing up is Andy Paul. Okay. And here's Andy's profile. Okay. So. By the way, everybody, really quick. All right, we're doing this off the riff. Okay. Yeah, no this practice. Is from scratch. Nothing has <laughs> nothing has been prepped for this. The four people are uh, have been shared with me just before this. Um, the best thing. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna context. make it. Yeah, we're gonna make it a little easy for you because we are just doing this totally off the fly from scratch. Very little prep. We wanted to make it as real as possible. Like you know, so let, we're gonna assume that Andy Paul is a sales leader that runs a B2B SaaS company and Mike wants to reach out to him about Saster. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to break down Andy's personality type. So Andy is a DS Mike. And so what does that mean? Here's some pointers. So subject line, let's we'll start with the subject line, right? And if you want to pull up the Google doc, then, We'll kind of shift and share that here in a moment. Um, no, I think I think I want to remember all this. So let's go through. Yeah. I want to really walk through the audience of how I would actually go through emailing. Um, I don't want let's 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 keep this honest. Let's keep this as to the T as possible. Um, we're gonna make this all interesting. Right. Okay, so he's a DS. He's a DS. So to subject line okay. to the point and formal for subject line. Yep. Okay. Um, salutation skip. So skip. Hi. Hey, first name only recommended greeting. No. So skip lines, <laughs> skip lines. Like I hope you're doing well, you know, yeah. and that stuff. Right. You don't use this Avoid. anyway. If you're still Avoid. sending, I hope you're doing well, Mike. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's a different problem. Um, <laughs> avoid emojis and gifts. Bullet yeah. points could use. Okay. Closing line, formally state your ask. Okay. So formally state. So try something like if you're available tomorrow, shall I discuss? Right. <clears throat> so with your closing line or your call to action, formally state your ask. Um, tone of words. Uh, we're just going to go to tone of words here. And I, I made this screen. I don't know if everybody can see this. Okay. I made it a little bit bigger. But uh, can you see? Let me know if you guys can see what we're reading here. Okay. If not, I can make the. Uh, Try to make the screen a little bit bigger. So tone of words should be confident with a formal touch and focused on output, okay? And uh, short, so 100, 100, 100 to 120 words recommended. Okay. Okay? 
All right. Does that give you, okay, does that give so you enough? For Andy. Andy also, if I'm correct, if you can scroll down on his profile, I know Andy posts a lot, right? He's got almost 200,000 yeah. followers. He's a number one selling author. He does some consultation stuff. Um, <laughs> shout out Jack yeah, a- watching me not do my day job. Uh, love you too. Um, this is my day job, Jack. Come on. Okay. So <laughs> He's an author. He's the host of a podcast. He's got his own website. And I and I think he really does um, some consultancy. Yeah. So there we go. So but we're also you know we're also assuming that he's a sales leader for a B2B SaaS company. Yeah. Right. Correct. Yep. We're giving we're giving you that one. one we're giving you that angle. one bone. No, no, I don't even want it. We're gonna make this difficult. Uh, <laughs> he's a consultant. There's a place for him at Saster. What we're going to do is we're going to assume his consultancy business is large enough to have a booth. Okay. Okay. Um, so if you want to scroll up, I like to look at their about sections. I bet Andy's got a big one. So let's go to his about section. It's going to be down. I think it's the right yep. little activity. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he does. Really quick. All right. Training humans to act like salespeople is what calls out to me. So if you can tell, Andy puts in parentheses or he puts in quotes already, I can tell the things that he wants it to stick out to people. So training humans to act like salespeople, teaching sellers to be more human, ignore the rest of the mm. stuff, right? It's probably just a question. And then the challenge sales says 53% of the buying is based on the buyer's experience with the individual seller. That means you, not the product you sell. Okay, great. Let's go write the email. I already have what I need. All right. Okay. All right. So subject line. Subject line. Human to human. That's the formal presence of his books. It seems like that's you like this? really what he teaches. No, two. I like to put T-O or, and then the capital of the T. Uh, T-O. Oh, hum- oh, yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah. All right. Selling human to human is this thing. All right. So for the first line, um, he's not a hey, hey, Andy guy, right? So he, he's not that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some text before his name. Ah, okay. Right? Yeah. Okay. Give me who so um, let's do... Posting content on human to human selling is great. Well, let's call it H2H. Let's 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 abbreviate H2H. All right. On human to human selling is great. Comma Andy, period. Okay, I like that. Uh we'll we'll put a space in between Andy and comma there all right then we're going to go to the next line and this is the part so that's my personalization touch right he posts comment or he posts content he's got almost two hundred thousand followers he posts books we're talking about the fact that we know that his whole thing is around human to human but remember he's got a consulting business he needs business and right he's gonna just we're, we're, we're acting as if it's big enough to have a booth at Saster. so we're trying to get andy some business and we're trying to the way we're going to do that and the way I'm going to frame this email is by shaping to Andy why salespeople at Saster, which there's a large amount of salespeople there, need him, but they don't know it yet. Okay. Okay. So human to human. Hold on. We got a, sorry, Alex has a question. If you don't know what personality type someone is, how would you start an email? Okay. So Alex, if you know the personality types, right? If you know Ocean, if you know Disc, which you should, then by showing by someone like Andy, who has a who has a following, who has a profile, you could probably get to where he was. If you saw the way that he typed and the way he you know, made all of his descriptions, he likes to connect, but he's direct. He's going to pick who he connects with very, very particularly. And it's not about transaction. It's about giving him an opportunity to educate others on something they don't know. That's kind yeah, of what I if, got from Andy. And if you, if you 
spent a little bit more time and consumed some of the content and read some of that, you would see, you would see some of that in the content. Yeah. Yep. All right. So let's get back to the email. So subject human to human, posting content on human to human selling is great, Andy. Um, seems like sellers these days. No, actually, seems like sales leaders yeah. could preach that some more. Or practice, not preach, practice. I could practice that more. Just put more, take out some. Okay, period. Um, what do we want to call his consulting business? Um, what is it? I don't know if he has an actual name for it or if it's just Andy. AndyPaul.com. We'll call it Andy oh, Paul Consulting. The sales house. Okay. The sales house. There we go. All right. Let's do it. Go back. Seems like sales leaders should practice that more. <clears throat> With 15,000, put 15 and then a K. With 15,000 B2B SaaS revenue leaders. Revenue leaders at Saster Annual. So he already knows from my southern line from Saster, whatever. I like to just put in minimal for my company. Okay. With 15,000 B2B SaaS revenue leaders at Saster Annual, they've got a lot to learn from his, no, nope, period, sorry, period after annual, enter, enter. They've got. They've got a lot to learn from, what was it? The sales house, from the sales house. Enter, enter. If, and then put if, If helping other sales leaders uh, no, not just leaders. If helping other sales teams put revenue actually, not sales, revenue. If helping other revenue teams helping other revenue teams <clears throat> be great. If helping other revenue teams be great. Yeah, that'd be great. Is something you're passionate about. He's got a business for it. He's got to be passionate about it, right? Uh, you, like you are. So you, apostrophe R-E. No, no, no. You are uh, passionate about. Oh. Yeah. You're passionate about. Period. Enter, enter. Thoughts on thoughts. You want to formally state formally state your ask. Yeah, Andy. Oh no, <laughs> I'm gonna use thoughts on Andy here. <laughs> um, I'm gonna use thoughts thoughts on showcasing. the sales house at Saster. That's a formal ask, right? I'm formally saying, are you, are you, I'm formally saying I want you to showcase at Saster, but I'm also going to ask him for a little bit of his thoughts. All right. So thoughts we, on showcasing it, the sales house at Saster. Should we give it a read? See if you want to change anything? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So subject line, human to human. Posting content on H to H selling is great, Andy. Seems like sales leaders could practice that more. With 15K B2B SaaS revenue leaders at Saster Annual, they've got a lot to learn from the sales house. If helping other revenue teams be great is something you're passionate about, thoughts on showcasing the sales house at Saster. How do you feel about that? 
I'm shipping it. Would you change anything? No, I think I'm good. But you changed something. The I like all of it. This is the only line that I would maybe do a little bit differently. But I think it. I think it's. Uh, you can take out other if helping revenue teams. So it's more direct. Take out the word other. Yeah. If helping revenue if teams that. be great is something you're passionate about. Uh, put two more dots there. So a dot, dot, dot. It's a continuation of a thought. Yeah. Uh, like you it. could actually throw this into lavender too and see what the score is. All right. So now we're going to answer Ben. Ben has a perfect question. So having grammar errors and sentence structure is okay. feel like it'd be so hard for me to write something like with 15K B2B SaaS area. Look, Ben, yeah. I spent five and a half years of my life writing formal intelligence reports and briefing very formally to high level commanders in the US military. I feel your pain. It was very, very hard for me <laughs> to break this down, right? And to start writing sales emails like this. But the reason why I say it's okay to do this, to leave out, to have some grammatical errors is because no one's perfect. And if you write the perfect, right, you have write the perfect grammar and you have the perfect thing, it doesn't come off as human. It yeah. comes off as like the perfect, like, you know what I mean? Like the perfect writing, you don't make mistakes. It's kind of like when you post content. When you post content, what goes hot? It's the individual breakdowns of lines, right? Not the formal structured paragraph. So you just have to take off that hat, be willing to make a mistake, right? And guess what? This has been used to my advantage before. I, I actually emailed someone um, a while back and they're uh, from, from Europe and they used to be an editor and her thing said, dull copy, right? Her about section on, on LinkedIn said, dull copy, I'm coming for you. Grammatical errors, I'll find you. And so... In the very first line, I said, I'm not a I'm not a previous editor, so bear with me, comma, her name, period. Yeah. And she loved it so much she posted it on LinkedIn. I think it's just the fact of being able to willing to to acknowledge that you're not going to be perfect, you're not going to have the best email, you're not going to have the best grammar. But the point is when you read that email, it's exactly how I talk. And that's why I write emails the way I do, is because when you read my email and you reply to me, and then eventually we find ourselves on a, on a call like this, you're not going to feel like you're talking to a different person. You're still talking to me. I'm going to be informal. Right? I'm going to be, I'm going to be the me that you're talking to. Yeah. And, and I think also something to consider is, is who you're writing to, right? So if you're writing to a C type, you might want to like, Make sure you got Grammarly plugged in. You might want to double, triple yeah. check that. You're going to be a little bit more formal, a little bit more buttoned up. Um, so that's that's Sometimes. one thing to consider. That's the one Sometimes thing to consider. So okay. now, yeah. should we run this through and see? All right. So now Let's what we're going to do? AI we're going to we're going to we're going to do a little test here. Man versus robot. We're going to take. We're going to take, uh, let's see. We're going to take uh, Mike's email and we're going to run it through. We had a sample email here. Let's get rid of this. Um, and let's go Andy at andypaul.com. Right. And we're going to throw that in there. Is that so Andy's I'm email? Gonna... Yeah. We'll send it to him. We'll see if we get her point. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he might reply well, back. Right? It's just not going to be that he has faster. Um, and the line uh, breaks are weird here. We'll have to fix it. Yeah, we can. Uh, yeah, we'll fix that. So let's get back there. Let's get our subject line in there. Or you know what and it is? If you just go back to the Google Doc and you copy it again. Just paste it without the formatting. What do you mean? So just so copy. Just a yeah. Huh? Just the posting down, right? Because we're just on the body of it. 
Yeah. So copy that. And then control C, yep, and go back into there. And then now right click when you do it and do paste uh, and match style. Ah, okay. To... Whoops. Let's see here. You just have to delete the spacing. There you go. Okay. So now we're going to run this through the Humantic one-click personalization, which is going to take in Andy's personality. Sales leaders can't improve. 15K. Learn so much from the house house. Help our team succeed professionally. Suggestion. So not far off from what you wrote. Yeah, what does it say? Andy, post content, H2H selling, great. Jeez, okay, sales leaders can improve. 15K B2B sales leaders connected. Uh, all right, all right, let's ask the, the audience. I'd, I'd say, I'd say man, I'd say the man, man wins that one. The man wins. I would say sales. We'll, we'll, we'll give that. We'll give. We'll give that one uh, to Mike. All right. All right. So, so we have ten minutes left. Do we want to do another email, or do we want to? Yeah, ask we're get, We got to do Sam. We got to do Sam. <laughs> we have to. Yeah, we have to do, do Sam. Sam. All right. So that'll be easy. You to... can just stay on here. Stay on Google. You don't have to go back. Oh, all right. That'll be easy for That's you, fine. huh? All right. So let's go ahead and. So Sam, this, this is we're gonna do this example for Alex. Alex, you still there? Alex, you're still hanging with us? All right. Let's see if he's in the comments. If he's in the comments, this is a good example of when you don't know somebody's personalization or personality. All right. I don't know. I don't know if Alex is still with us. Uh, oh, all right. So Pablo said that was that email got a ninety-two. Nice. I think. Okay. Lavender score. All right. Here we go. All right. So, so Sam. Golden rule for lavender. If you have a 90 or above, send it. Framework. Right. And so we're going to pull up Sam real quick. And those that don't know Sam. All right. So Sam, Sam is similar to Andy, but she's actually a DS. Okay. So <clears throat> to the point and formal with the subject line, no salutation skip lines like I hope you're doing well. So you're gonna see a lot of similarities here with Sam and Andy. Avoid emojis, gifts, bullet points could use, formally state your ask, um, confident with formal touch, okay? Focused on output, short 120 words, okay? So uh, the secret to closing Sam with fa uh, fast with Sam, strong proof of impact and their conviction will matter the most, but they wouldn't want to act on it either. So, um, setting expectations. They will want to understand things well, but can move fast once they have a clear picture. Okay. So a lot of similarities. So okay. what would you do different with Sam? All right. So right off the bat, we're going to start off with a, we're not with a, like just above your Colin portion, put PS. Yeah. I'm going to give her a PS right away. Right. I already know the PS for Sam. So if you don't know this, uh, this is for the audience. Sam offers her shorts, her Sam shorts, for free yeah. for military personnel. Um, Sam is a great leader. Um, a majority of her team has connections to the military. They're either military spouses, they were in the military themselves, or something like that. So she does a lot for the military community. So I'm going to shoot off a PS for her. And she posts about this all the time. So if you follow her, so if you, you follow her content, right now. Yeah. So PS, I'm going to put the Sam shorts that are for free, that are free for the military, the Sam shorts being free for the military, being free for the military is invaluable. Comma. Thank you. Period. That's my PS for her. Okay. My subject line is going to be S, her show me, you know me acronym. What, your subject line? Yep, just the show me, you know me acronym. So S-Y-M-K-M, -M, show me, you know me. Yep. Yeah, that's it? 
uh, that's it. That's that's gonna be. Yeah, you would opinion. only know this if like you followed Sam and you dug deep. I mean, she, Sam puts a lot of content out. So um, if you spent three to five minutes, you could probably easily find out all all these things. Yeah, I mean, easy. You just <laughs> look at her profile. It's like, yeah, that's everything she does. She posts about it all the time. She comments about it all the time. It's perfect. Yeah. Okay. So show me you know me. Um, Are we going the same assumption here that Sam's consulting business should yeah. have a booth at SAS? Um, are we going to take a little bit of a different angle? What are your thoughts? What angle do you want to take? Um, I'll give you that or the audience. Give maybe me an just angle. getting her and her team to go to attend Saster. Like, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, let's get her to speak. Booth. Let's get her to speak. Yeah. She's a keynote speaker. She speaks a lot, right? All right. Okay. Um, You crushed it. You crushed it at women at the Women in Sales conference, comma Sam. At the Women in Sales conference, Sam. Women in sales Sam. Sam. Yeah. Enter, enter. Not many people practice what they preach. Period. Enter, enter. For you, that's obviously not the case. Um, more context for the audience. She has a ton of women that are on her team. Her team is incredible. They are, yeah, the work they do is amazing. So just some good context for you. For you, it's obviously not the case. Period. Yep. And then um, with a stellar cast, of women in leadership roles with a stellar cast like cast like cast on a show like cast yeah. of women leaders on the team of women leaders on the team the team or your team on the team because she views herself as a member of the team not the leader okay. of the team um and that's also a good point that you brought, uh, that you mentioned, Colin. So it's like you have to be very careful when you're emailing CEOs, people in the C-suite. If yeah. you notice that they champion their people a lot and they're like a player, they don't view themselves as the leader. They view themselves as equal. Don't write an email to them as if they're not equal. You write their email as if they are equal. You value their team. You bring in the fact that their team is great, right? Praise their team, not them. Okay, so you crushed it at the Women in Sales Conference, Sam. Not many people practice what they preach. For you, that's obviously not the case. With a stellar cast of women leaders on the team and a genius mind for personalization and relevance, put the and sign here. So I'm going to teach you a trick. All right, so at the period, put the and sign with a comma. Right here? Or space, uh, kill the space. period? Nope. Keep the period. Put and, comma. Yeah. And like this? Yep, comma. Okay. Okay. And comma, enter, enter. A genius mind for personalization and relevance. Mind for personalization and relevance. Do you want to explain this? Why did you do this? Here? Yeah, yeah. It's a subconscious thing. Human nature is to finish what you start. If I yeah. start a sentence at the end of another one and I leave you off and I leave you hanging, you're going to, it's forcing you. It mentally forces you to read the next line. It's always great to throw one of these in in the middle of your email if you're worried you might lose them or you want to continue to grab that attention, right? Yeah. So fun little trick. All right. So and comma, a genius mind for personalization and relevance, period. Thought you'd deliver a killer thought leadership session at Saster. Shit. 
leadership session. Yep, that's Aster. Period. That's it. So sometimes CTAs don't have to ask a question. We're cutting it off short, right? We're already at the one o'clock hour. I already know this. So I want to I want to teach something here. Um, sometimes you don't have to end it with a question, right? Your CTA can be a statement and your CTA can leave them as with curiosity, whatever. But this is an effective CTA because I'm not making a formal ask. I'm giving her my personal thoughts and I'm giving her the data as to why I think she would do a killer thought leader suggestion, right? She's done it before. She's done it. She's going to do it again. Why not do it as faster? And then she yeah. would probably reach out and say, you know what? I would love to. Right? Heather's got a question. Yeah. Active versus passive mentality. In the initial outreach. Yeah. With Sam specifically. Yeah. So you want to stay active and our natural instinct is to talk passively uh, when we're writing email or we're writing at all. And so this is why I always do a reread. So you crushed it at the women in sales conference, Sam. Now that was in the past. So it has to be a little bit passive, but saying you crushed it is active, right? The women in sales conference portion is passive. So it almost comes off as neutral, right? Not many people practice what they preach. That's active. That's the, that's a fact, right? Uh, for you, that's obviously not the case. Again, active, keeping her engaged with a stellar cast of women leaders on the team. Uh, that's neutral and a genius mind for personalization and relevance, also neutral, but it's interesting. We're complimenting her, right? We're showing that fact that we read and we, we we're actually showing what it is that she practices. And that you know her. Right, exactly. Um, thought you would deliver a kill th th killer thought leadership session at Saster. Now, you could change this to say you would or you will deliver a, thought leader, a killer thought leadership session at Saster. But the reason why I didn't do that is because she's not on the agenda yet. She's not doing it yet. I think she could do it, and I think she should. So I'm giving her my thought, and I'm also at the same time asking her what her thoughts are. The PS yeah. at the end is just a little bit more active does feel yeah. more confident. You're right, Heather. Yeah. When you are yeah. active with your voice, you are obvious. You are going to come off as more confident. Yeah. Love it. This was awesome. Let's, let's give it, let's give it one more spin. See if, uh, see if Mike comes out on top. Let's see. I'll do this, Heather. I don't know if you're the only one with us or whatnot, but if there's any last minute questions, go for, feel free and ask. I do have to run here. In the next five yeah. minutes or so, but um, feel free to ask some questions. All right, so, awesome, man. Mike. Mike, this was uh, thanks for breaking this down, man. Really appreciate it. Thanks for coming to the session. Thanks for everybody that hung out with us. Um, if you want to put some of this stuff to the test and better know your prospects, all you got to do is go to Humantic AI, Humantic AI, uh, download a free trial and start putting it to the test yourself. Yeah, feel free to reach out to me if you need anything. Um, I'll try to get to it, but yeah, it was great. Thanks for having me, Colin. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. Thanks everybody. And, uh, appreciate everybody hanging out with us and the engaged audience. Oh, there you go. We got one question. Oh, Any tips on emailing questions? hiring managers? Yeah. Oops. Logan, you're emailing a hiring manager. Okay. You, you got to do some research on the company, right? It's going to be a little bit different. It's not going to come off as salesy. Hiring managers are different. You need to come off on, you need to do some research on the role, do some research on the company, showcase why you would provide value. Give them three things that they're looking for. Look at the job description, highlight the biggest three things that they're looking for in somebody. And then you break down, not in full detail, but I would say in bullets are fine. Those three things, in a one line sentence of why you are a perfect match for those three things. And then ask them if they would be willing to have a conversation with you. Keep it at that. Don't include your resume on the outreach. Yeah. Conversation stays. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, Logan. Appreciate it. Lindsay, thanks for hanging out with us. Mike, thanks again. Really appreciate it. Super helpful. Tons of value here. Um, and appreciate everybody who hung out with us today. Yeah. Thanks, guys.